They never saw it coming. No missile trails, no roaring jets, just two small shapes gliding down from the clouds. And then, boom, another Russian tank, gone. And the weapon responsible? It's not American, not British, not even German, it's Swedish. That's right, the land of Ikea, ABBA, and sensible winter coats also makes one of the most terrifying tank killers on Earth. It's called BONUS, short for Beaufort's Nutating Shell, but to tank crews, it might as well stand for Bye Bye Our New Units Shredded. Now before you imagine some high-tech missile, let's get one thing straight. BONUS isn't fired from a jet or drone. It's fired from your standard NATO 155mm artillery gun. Same gun, same shell casing, completely different outcome. The story of BONUS starts way back in the 1980s, when Sweden's legendary arms maker Bofors decided it was tired of traditional artillery doing the same old lob a big explosion and hope it hits something routine. Swedes don't like wasting ammo or money, so they teamed up with the French company Nexter to design a smarter shell. The partner the ship was formalized in 1993, production kicked off in 1998, and by the early 2000s, Bonus was rolling out of factories ready to rewrite the rules of artillery. Here's what they came up with. A shell that doesn't just explode, it hunts. Imagine you're firing a 155mm shell from a Swedish Archer or a British AS-90. The gun fires, the shell screams through the sky for 30 kilometers, and then, right around a thousand meters above the battlefield, something magical happens. The shell opens up. Two small spinning submunitions pop out, each with its own sensors, winglets, and attitude. They start gliding and scanning the ground below, using infrared and laser sensors to pick out tank-shaped heat signatures. And when they find one, they don't just fall, they strike from above, sending an explosively formed penetrator straight through the roof armor. Think of it like this. Instead of hitting a tank in the chest where it's wearing body armor, Bonus punches it straight in the head where it forgot to wear a helmet. Clean, efficient, and terrifyingly Swedish. Each of these submunitions covers an area the size of five football fields, around 32,000 square meters, scanning for anything that even looks remotely armored. That means a single shell can hunt two different targets in one shot. Two kills, one shell, a $100,000 round, taking out up to $10 million of Russian hardware. That's not just smart warfare, that's cost-effective Scandinavian design. It also uses something called a base bleed mechanism, which reduces drag and extends the range to about 35 kilometers. In plain English, it goes farther, faster, and hits smarter than almost anything else in its weight class. This thing doesn't need GPS or radio links. It's completely autonomous once fired. No jamming, no interference, and no mercy. When it's in the air, it's on a mission. And right now, in Ukraine, it's fulfilling that mission with brutal efficiency. So what happens when Bonus meets a battlefield that's already been modernized with drones, forward observers, and Western-style fire control? Short answer, it turns artillery into a very picky, very lethal predator. Drones spot enemy columns or convoys. Observers feed coordinates. Batteries compute a fire solution. The gun fires a perfectly normal-looking 155-millimeter shell. And then the shell turns into something that thinks for itself. Two submunitions fan down, each scanning a footprint of up to about 32,000 square meters. If one sees an armored vehicle, it strikes from above, where a tank is embarrassingly thin. If it sees nothing, it keeps looking. No panic, no second guessing, just methodical hunting. That methodical nature changes tactics on the ground. Massed columns are suddenly vulnerable. Tight formations become liabilities. Tanks that used to rely on heavy frontal armor have to hope their commanders remember constantly that the sky can be the most dangerous direction. In practice, you see more dispersion, more concealment attempts, and an army that's slightly more paranoid in the best possible way. Is it decisive? In my opinion, yes, at the tactical level. Bonus doesn't win wars by itself, but it turns armored movement into a high-risk operation and forces opponents to commit resources they might not have wanted to commit. Drones for counter-reconnaissance, EW teams to suppress observers, and extra escorts for tanks that should have been able to move alone. Those are real 
costs and real headaches. We've seen signatures in open source footage and analyst reports that are consistent with top attack sub munitions, neat circular penetrations through roofs, turret cookoffs, and convoys halted with catastrophic results. Those patterns match what Bonus is built to do. Attribution in war is always careful work, so we say consistent with, not 100% confirmed by us. Still, the technique and the damage pattern line up. And it's not just theory. Bonus is compatible with NATO standard 155mm guns, works from systems like Archer and AS-90, and with two submunitions per shell, you can potentially hit two targets with one shot. That multiplier changes mission math. Fewer rounds, more effect. From a logistics and planning standpoint, that is very attractive. If bonus sounds unstoppable, don't get carried away. Every weapon has limits, and every weapon shapes new counters. Smoke screens, for instance, can blunt infrared sensors for a short time. Active protection systems on tanks can defeat some top attack threats in certain geometries. Dispersion, camouflage, movement at night, and fighting from heavily built up or covered positions reduce the submunitions effectiveness. Also, urban areas, dense forests, and underground positions blunt the advantage of a top attack munition. In short, Bonus raises the bar for survival, but it doesn't make armored vehicles entirely obsolete. There's also economics. These are precision munitions, and they aren't cheap. States pay a premium for accuracy. Sweden's 2025 contract, roughly $62 million, about 600 million Swedish kroner for additional rounds, shows continuing investment and demand. That figure isn't small, but when you consider what a single bonus round can negate in terms of armor and the operational headaches it creates, many planners see the math as reasonable. My take? It's expensive, but more economically sensible than replacing whole tank brigades or buying air sorties for every armored column. Politically and industrially, Bonus is interesting because it's Swedish, a smaller country punching above its weight with a highly specialized, high-value product. Beaufort's, a name with a very long history in artillery, and France's Nexter gave this munition a pedigree that made it widely adoptable. Today, operators include a number of European countries and partners beyond Europe, which shows that niche engineering can have global impact. Looking forward, I think the real story is integration. Bonus is most powerful when it's part of a network, drones for eyes, modern command and control for brains, artillery for hands. Expect future iterations to lean into better sensors, improve discrimination algorithms, and more resilient deployment profiles. I wouldn't be surprised to see more automated target recognition features or sub-munitions that can better distinguish decoys from real vehicles. That's where the next leap will come. So what does all this mean for the tank? It means armor will adapt. Tanks will not vanish because they still bring mobility, shock, and firepower you can't replace with shells alone. But their use will be more cautious, more supported, and more expensive in terms of protective layers. In my opinion, the tank becomes part of a networked system rather than the central star of the show. A quiet thing built in Sweden changed a small part of how modern armies fight. That's the paradox. The loud, expensive systems get headlines. But sometimes the smartest change the game by being precisely, quietly effective. Bonus is not a myth or a magic bullet. It's an engineered solution that exploits a real vulnerability in armored design, the top, and it does it reliably. If you liked this deep dive, consider this. Weapons are just applied physics and design choices. When clever engineers focus on a single, solvable problem, and when doctrine and technology line up, the battlefield changes. Whether you cheer that change or worry about where it leads, you can't deny how efficient design reshapes strategy.